Hey everyone and welcome back to another very spicy industry report. I mean, if you want to see Gabe try to utterly destroy someone with the FBI, you'll learn that in this one. Let's just jump in, okay? So, yesterday the source code of TF2 and CSGO leaked. This obviously does not look good for Valve, and I'm sure Gabe and his lads at the top are absolutely pissed at the situation. Today we're going to get into why and how it was leaked, uh, but first... You know, what does this actually mean for their games? CSGO, that has hit a peak concurrent of 1.3 million over the weekend, so surely this could not have came at a worse time for the company. Well, according to Valve, it means basically nothing. After a review of what happened, they determined that this leak is actually related to code that was released to partners in 2017, and had already been leaked in 2018, and that basically there is no reason for players to be concerned. Now, I mean, yeah, what else would Valve say here, really? They're hardly going to say, yes, everyone, uh, well, our games are now compromised, uh, stop playing them immediately, right? They're not actually going to go and say that. Uh, but in the eight or nine hours that it took for Valve to respond officially, players did go a little bit stir-crazy about the whole thing. All across the CSGO and TF2 communities, people were yes, panicking, calling for everyone to stop playing those games right now because of the supposed possibility of RCE, that is remote code execution, and it is exactly what it sounds like, forcing the target client to run some code that it otherwise would not. Now, that could include installing some ransomware in your computer, some malware, or, you know, whatever else. Obviously, having access to the source code could allow for exploits to be found, that definitely is the case, especially in an online game with community-hosted servers. And there is actually precedent for this as well. Uh, there was at least one notable source exploit in June of 2017, though Valve did fix that within a day after being notified by a security research firm who found it. Now, TF2, it's got a pretty consistent problem with just bots, cheats, and general BS in community servers, so, you know, the fear of hijinks going on is not exactly unfounded. In fact, a cheating group actually did claim that they found an RCE already, and that this evidence was then spread mainly in screenshots, but it turns out that was basically just a joke that ended up going too far. Any exploits being found through this old source code probably would have had to have been pretty darn obscure for Valve to have not found them. So then, what about Valve's claims of everything being fine? I'd say that generally I would trust them in this one. If they don't think there's a reason to be alarmed, then there probably isn't here. People are very aware of how the source engine works, and they have been for years, and any potential issues, they are regularly ironed out there. And also, this is code that's been available to those in the know for quite some time, right? So that, you know, those in the know, that would also include people who are highly motivated to cause harm. Now, according to Valve News Network's uh, Tyler, a lot of um, the recent TF2 grief has actually come from that source. Then in addition to that, uh, Valve have actually had a bug bounty program up at HackerOne since 2017, and through that, they've already dished out almost a million dollars, and that's just covering bug bounties for Steam services and Steam games. Now, the possibility of source code revealing anything new from a malicious party as opposed to researchers who are, you know, using that to actually get the bug bounties, I would say that's pretty low, and really that's what bug bounty programs are for. They're not quite as sexy as starting a hacking group with a real cool name, but they do accomplish the same goal, right? Being able to make some money and proving your worth as, you know, somebody who's hacking things, basically. Now, there is one pretty obvious counterpoint to Valve saying that everything is fine. If they knew about existing bugs, they would fix them, right? They wouldn't ship exploitable code that they knew about, so if there is something there that is a problem, Valve wouldn't have a clue. I can just only hope that their review of the said code was actually thorough. So, with that covered, let's go on to the more dramatic part of this, okay? Where did the leak come from and why? Well, this is not the first time that Valve have been hit with a code leak. Back in 2003, a young German man named Axel hacked Valve's network and made off with a dev build of Half-Life 2. Remember, Half-Life 2 had been delayed and it was highly coveted. Now, after trusting someone else with a copy, it was leaked. Gabe was ruthless. Axel confessed to Gabe over email, hoping for forgiveness, and uh, then maybe the fact that he was able to pull it off could get him sort of inside Valve officially, maybe get him a job. Gabe responded by asking him for a phone interview, getting the naive teenager's confession in full. Gabe then invited him to Valve's HQ for a full interview. 
which of course was all a ruse for the FBI to arrest him on American soil. Luckily for Axel though, the German police were informed and they arrested him themselves. Suffice to say, the feds would have treated him significantly worse than the Germans. The German court gave him two years of probation after he supposedly made positive life changes while he was awaiting his trial. Uh, certainly, it would have been a different situation if that had have went down on American soil and have he, like, had he actually got on that plane. So don't cross Gabe. Even if it's an accident, don't cross Gabe. You've seen his knife collection. Okay, now this leak. So the stakes here are definitely a good bit older because this is, well, older code of already released games. But the principle here is much the same. Valve trusted people and that trust was abused, right? As far as we understand here, Tyler McVicker said that the original leak was in 2018 and that was from the Source Engine dev community, but that this time it was actually somebody else. So in that original leak, the Source mod team, uh, Lever Softworks, warned Valve and they actually managed to contain the leak to an extent. So it wasn't a widespread story. It was sort of kept under wraps. Now this recent leak is the same code, but it was leaked very publicly from a disgruntled member of Lever Softworks. Now, that's a member who basically was recently booted from the team for uh, problematic behavior in the team that included like bullying another member uh, to leave and stuff like that. And basically they got really pissed off with their situation and they decided to just, you know, F it, burn the bridges and leak everything they had to 4chan. Now that resulted in this source code leak, then a leak of a huge uh, conversation between VNN's Tyler and a supposed Valve dev from 2016. And uh, yeah, just basically everything that person had in Valve. And there's really not much in that data dump that's not been reported on realistically. I mean, it was including things like that Valve had worked on an MMO at one point that apparently would have been perfect for VR. And actually very funnily, there was the other thing that apparently Valve wanted to hire Kojima back when he broke up with Konami, but Sony offered a ton more money it's not really been verified, but that is, you know, that is what supposedly an employee said in the chat logs that were leaked. Now, in terms of the damage dealt overall here, it's expected that this will be seen as a vulnerability or a weakness from Valve and that they will stop providing code and assistance to source mods and external developers, which is kind of sad. I mean, the entire Valve community could actually be hurt significantly by this leak happening since this is one of the first cases of major broken trust. And in this case, it is directly harming CSGO and TF2. TF2 is still a pretty big game, but more importantly, CSGO is absolutely just at its apex right now. So yes, this may not feel as huge as the original Half-Life 2 leak, but that's a game with millions of players being potentially compromised, and that is going to be massive, even in terms of just the PR hit, right? Now, what we know for sure here is that the person who leaked this is basically known to everyone involved in the scene, the in the know people, and that all that info has been shared with Valve's legal department. And if Valve still treat leaks in the same way that they did in 2003, that leaker should probably be terrified. This, you know, it could, it could cause millions of damages for Valve, right? There's headlines there saying, don't play this game, it might be dangerous to your computer. So Valve rightly will be pissed at this. Um, I certainly would not want to be in the same country as an angry Gabe Newell. I mean, we made this video's thumbnail that way for a reason, after we did digging into the Axel story from 2003. So there you go, this is basically just an interesting event for Valve. Stuff like this is bound to happen in both cases. The leaks were ultimately from mistrusting humans. Sadly though, there's no real, real way around this happening, right? Outside of just keeping a real tight community that are actually allowed access to things. And you know, I guess even the threat of Valve's legal team, if somebody is pissed off enough at their situation and incensed to act, that's not going to be enough. It's definitely a shame this has happened because a world in which Valve are more open with their community in terms of code, helping with projects and stuff like that, that would be an absolutely fantastic thing but this has obviously pulled us away from that. And then there's a final thing that should be fun, but kind of pissed me off a bit. Uh, so what we can glean from the source code leak is just that Valve's programmers are like any other programmers. There's code comments of things like, you know, make the unbumped version not so effing stupid and not need tangent space transpose, you knob. And all that just made me nostalgic, made me miss dev work. And, you know, I hear there's actually similarly funny instances of just devs sort of sounding off in the full source access version of Unreal Engine 4 that like top tier devs get. But look, this is something that is actually funny because really stupid outlets, journals who don't understand what they're doing, have picked up on this and they've been claiming that this is a terrible bullying practice. Honestly, piss off. You're not devs. You don't know the culture of code comments, how devs are. 
Uh, I mean, most of the time that I would leave a profanity-laced comment in any of my work, that would be aimed at my own ability or inability to solve a problem. And it kind of reminds me of that time that uh, Rock, Paper, Shotgun tried to basically character assassinate, I think it was RimWorld, and it was because they just literally did not understand the code stuff they were looking at. But hey, that was Rock, Paper, Shotgun. A few of their people certainly seem to have anger management problems. And yes, that, that was just a silly little sort of a cherry of stupidity on top of this whole story that, yeah, some outlets were taking code, like, they were taking code comments out of context, clearly had zero understanding of what programming is actually like, because if they did, they wouldn't have made those articles, and yeah, just got some cheap clicks from it. So, yeah, screw that, but overall, very interesting story, uh, even if it is just a vector of telling you the story of Gabe absolutely destroying Axel, the, the young German in 2003, who leaked Half-Life 2, sort of. So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support us and also get the daily briefing and potentially some tasty physical loot, you can do that over on Patreon. It massively helps us out. And hey, stuff straight from our game development team to your inbox. It's a pretty cool situation. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know what you thought about the story, and I'll see you next time.